The Call of Gideon The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Judges 6.12 Hello, celestial seekers. Welcome back to another exploration of faith and divine purpose. Today we dive into the incredible story of Gideon, a man who was called to greatness when he least expected it. Let's jump right in. At this point in Israel's history, the Midianites had oppressed them for seven long years. The people of Israel were terrified, hiding in caves and struggling just to survive. The Midianites were relentless, stealing crops and livestock, leaving the Israelites in desperation. This is where we first meet Gideon, not in battle, not as a leader, but as a man simply trying to thresh some wheat in secret to avoid the enemy. And then it happened, a moment that would change everything. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon with these powerful words. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Can you imagine what must have been going through Gideon's mind? He wasn't a warrior. In fact, he was hiding, doing whatever he could to stay off the Midianites' radar. Yet here was an angel calling him not just a warrior, but a mighty warrior. But Gideon wasn't convinced. His immediate response was disbelief, just like many of us would probably react. He asked, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about? Gideon's questions sound familiar, don't they? When life seems overwhelming, it's easy to wonder where God is. What do you think? Have you ever felt like Gideon, questioning why things aren't going the way you expected, even when you've heard stories of God's faithfulness? Let's talk about it in the comments. We're all on this journey together, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Despite his doubts, the angel didn't back down. Instead, he said something even more profound. Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Think about that for a second. God wasn't asking Gideon to be someone he wasn't. He wasn't looking for the perfect warrior. He simply wanted Gideon to go with the strength he already had. God would handle the rest. How often do we feel like we're not enough? We don't have what it takes to face the challenges in front of us. But just like Gideon, we're reminded that it's not about our strength, it's about God's power working through us. The Test of Faith Even after the angel called Gideon a mighty warrior, he still struggled with doubt. Can you imagine being told that you're chosen to save an entire nation and still feeling uncertain? That's exactly what happened to Gideon. He had heard God's plan, but deep down he wasn't sure he could trust it completely. So, Gideon did what many of us might do. He asked for a sign. He wanted to be sure this was really God's will. First, he prepared an offering of meat and bread. When the angel touched it with the tip of his staff, fire flared from the rock and consumed the offering. It was a powerful moment, and Gideon knew he was standing in the presence of something divine. But even after seeing this miracle, Gideon's faith still wasn't fully solid. He decided to ask God for another sign, something undeniable. He placed a fleece of wool on the ground and prayed, If you will save Israel by my hand as you have promised, make the fleece wet with dew in the morning, but keep the ground around it dry. The next morning, Gideon found exactly what he asked for. The fleece was soaked, and the ground was completely dry. He squeezed out enough water from the fleece to fill a bowl. But Gideon, still filled with a bit of hesitation, asked for yet another sign. This time, he reversed the request. The fleece should stay dry, and the ground around it should be covered with dew. God, in his patience, granted this request as well. The next morning, the fleece was dry, and the ground was damp with dew. Through these signs, Gideon's faith began to grow. He realized that God wasn't just sending him into battle unprepared. God was walking with him, guiding him every step of the way. It wasn't just about Gideon's courage. It was about God's power and faithfulness. Think about how relatable Gideon's situation is. How often do we too need reassurance that we're on the right path? Sometimes, even when we know God is calling us to something, we hesitate, needing confirmation. It's comforting to see that God didn't get frustrated with Gideon's need for signs. Instead, he met Gideon where he was, slowly building his confidence. Has there ever been a time in your life when you asked God for a sign? How did that experience shape your faith? Let's talk about it in the comments. Sometimes it's in the waiting and the asking that our faith is strengthened. The 300 men, with his faith strengthened by the signs from God, 
Gideon finally accepted his role as the leader of Israel's army. He gathered 32,000 men, ready to face the Midianites who had been terrorizing their land. But God had a surprising plan in mind. He told Gideon that there were too many men in the army. If they won with such a large force, the Israelites might take the credit for the victory instead of realizing that it was God who delivered them. So God told Gideon to make an announcement. Anyone who was afraid could go home. Can you imagine the reaction? Out of 32,000 men, 22,000 turned around and left. Gideon was left with only 10,000 soldiers. But even this was still too many for God's plan. He wanted the victory to be a clear demonstration of his power. Next, God gave Gideon another test to reduce the army further. He told Gideon to take the remaining men down to the water and watch how they drank. Those who knelt down and drank directly from the stream were to be sent home. But those who cupped the water in their hands and lapped it like dogs were to stay. In the end, only 300 men remained. Just think about that for a moment. Gideon started with 32,000 soldiers, and now he was down to 300. These 300 men were about to face an army so large that the Bible describes the Midianites as thick as locusts, and their camels as numerous as the sand on the seashore. The odds seemed impossible, but that was exactly the point. God didn't want Israel to rely on their own strength or numbers. He wanted them to trust completely in Him. And so, with just 300 men, Gideon prepared to face a vast and powerful enemy. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt completely outnumbered or overwhelmed, but had to trust in something bigger than yourself? How did you handle it? Let's discuss in the comments. Sometimes, it's when we feel weakest that we truly see how strong God can be. The unconventional strategy, with only 300 men at his side, Gideon now faced the daunting task of going into battle against the massive Midianite army. From a human perspective, the odds were impossible. An army of tens of thousands against just a small group of 300 seemed like certain defeat. But God had a plan, a strategy that no one would expect. Instead of arming his men with swords or shields, God gave Gideon a different kind of battle plan. Each of the 300 men was given a trumpet, an empty clay jar, and a torch to put inside the jar. It must have seemed strange to the soldiers. No weapons, no armor, just trumpets, jars, and torches. But Gideon trusted God's plan, even if it didn't make sense. As night fell, Gideon divided his men into three groups and positioned them around the Midianite camp. It was dark, and the Midianites were sleeping, unaware of the surprise that was about to unfold. At Gideon's signal, the men were to blow their trumpets, break their jars, and hold up their torches high for all to see. When the moment came, Gideon gave the signal, and suddenly the quiet night was shattered by the blast of 300 trumpets. The sound echoed through the valley, waking the Midianites in a panic. At the same time, the soldiers broke their jars, and the sudden burst of light from the torches made it seem like a massive army surrounded the camp. The Midianites, confused and terrified, thought they were under attack by a far larger force. In their panic, they turned on each other, fighting and killing their own men in the chaos. The once overwhelming army was now in disarray, and those who weren't killed fled in fear. Gideon's small band of 300 men didn't even have to raise a sword. God's unconventional strategy worked perfectly, and the victory was complete without a single Israelite casualty. It was a powerful reminder that when God is in control, the impossible becomes possible. He doesn't need large numbers or powerful weapons. He needs faith and obedience. Think about how strange this must have felt for Gideon and his men. They were going into battle without any traditional means of defense, but they had something far greater, trust in God's plan. Have you ever been in a situation where the solution seemed unconventional or didn't make sense at the time? but ended up being exactly what was needed. How did you handle it? Let's share those moments in the comments below. Often, it's in the most unexpected ways that we see God's power at work. Pursuit and conflict, after the miraculous victory over the Midianites. Gideon's work was far from over. The Midianite army, though shattered and confused, was still on the run. Many of their soldiers had fled in fear, and Gideon knew that to secure Israel's safety, he had to finish the job. So, with his 300 men, he pursued the remaining Midianites across the Jordan River, 
determined to bring an end to their threat once and for all. As Gideon and his men chased after the fleeing army, they were exhausted from the long battle and the pursuit that followed. They came to the town of Sukkoth and asked the people there for food, hoping to get some much-needed relief. But instead of offering support, the leaders of Sukkoth mocked Gideon. They didn't believe he could finish the job. Are Ziba and Zalmunna already in your hands? They asked, referring to the Midianite kings Gideon was pursuing. Their doubt must have been frustrating for Gideon. Here he was, fighting for the freedom of Israel, and his own people refused to help. Despite the lack of support, Gideon pressed on, refusing to let the taunts and disbelief slow him down. He and his men continued their pursuit, determined to capture the Midianite kings and end the threat once and for all. And eventually, Gideon did just that. He caught up with the Midianite kings, Ziba and Zalmunna, and captured them. The victory was complete, but Gideon hadn't forgotten the people of Succoth. On his return, he confronted them for their lack of faith and punished the leaders for their refusal to help. But this wasn't the only internal conflict Gideon faced. Soon after his victory, the men of Ephraim, one of the tribes of Israel, approached Gideon angrily. They were upset that they hadn't been called to join the initial battle. They felt left out of the victory and were frustrated that they hadn't had a chance to share in the glory. It's an interesting moment because even after such a miraculous victory, conflict and jealousy arose within Gideon's own people. However, Gideon handled this situation with wisdom and humility. Instead of arguing or letting the conflict grow, he praised the men of Ephraim for their role in the later part of the battle. He reminded them of how they had captured key Midianite leaders and said, what was I able to do compared to you? By showing humility and recognizing their contribution, Gideon was able to calm their anger and avoid further division. This part of Gideon's story teaches us something important about leadership. Even after a great victory, challenges can arise, sometimes from unexpected places. Gideon didn't just have to fight the external enemy, he also had to deal with internal conflicts among his own people. His wisdom in handling these situations shows us that being a leader isn't just about winning battles, it's about managing relationships and keeping unity among those you lead. Have you ever faced a situation where, even after success, there were conflicts so? Gideon's legacy with the defeat of the Midianites and the capture of their kings, Gideon had brought peace and freedom to Israel. The victory over the oppressors was miraculous, and Israel was finally free from the terror that had plagued them for years. For the first time in a long while, the Israelites could live without fear. Gideon had led them to this victory with just 300 men, proving that faith in God could overcome even the most impossible odds. As the dust settled after the battle, the people of Israel were so impressed with Gideon's leadership that they came to him with a request. They wanted him to become their king. Rule over us, you, your son, and your grandson, because you have saved us from the hand of Midian, they said. It was a tempting offer. Gideon could have taken control and established a dynasty. After all, he had earned their respect and loyalty through his bravery and trust in God. But Gideon, to his credit, refused. He told the people, I will not rule over you, nor will my son. The Lord will rule over you. Gideon understood something important. The victory belonged to God, not to him. He knew that Israel's true leader was God himself, and he didn't want to take credit for something that was clearly God's doing. This humility showed Gideon's deep understanding of his role in the story. He was a servant of God, not someone seeking power for himself. However, even though Gideon refused the kingship, he made a decision that would later have serious consequences. He asked the people for gold earrings they had collected from the Midianites as part of the spoils of war. With this gold, Gideon made an ephod, a religious garment. At first, the ephod might have seemed like a harmless symbol, perhaps meant to remind the people of God's victory. But over time, the people began to worship the ephod itself, turning it into an idol. What started as a well-meaning gesture eventually led the Israelites back into the very sin of idolatry that had gotten them into trouble in the first place. This part of Gideon's story shows us how easily people can lose focus. Even after experiencing such a powerful demonstration of God's strength, 
the Israelites quickly turned their attention to the wrong thing. Instead of worshipping God, they became fixated on the ephod. Gideon's mistake serves as a reminder that even leaders with the best intentions can make decisions that lead others astray if they're not careful. For the rest of his life, Gideon lived peacefully, and under his leadership, Israel enjoyed 40 years of peace. But after Gideon died, things took a darker turn. The Israelites once again fell into idolatry and forgot the God who had delivered them. They didn't honor Gideon's family or remember the incredible things God had done through him. It's a sad ending to an otherwise heroic story. Despite all the miracles, victories, and peace, the people still returned to their old ways once Gideon was gone. Gideon's legacy is complex. On one hand, he is remembered as a man of great faith who trusted God in the face of overwhelming odds. He led Israel to victory when no one else could, and his courage inspired a nation. But on the other hand, his story also warns us about the dangers of pride, even subtle forms of it. Gideon's decision to make the ephod, though not an obvious act of rebellion, led the people away from God in the long run. His life reminds us that every decision we make can have lasting consequences, both good and bad. As we reflect on Gideon's journey, we are left with some important questions. What does it mean to be a leader who not only wins battles, but also helps people stay focused on God? How do we make sure that our actions, even well-intentioned ones, don't lead others astray? And most importantly, how do we continue to rely on God's guidance in everything we do, so that we don't fall into the same traps that Gideon and the Israelites did? Share your thoughts in the comments. Have you ever made a decision that seemed good at the time, but later led to unintended consequences? How did you handle it? Let's learn from Gideon's story and encourage one another to stay focused on the true source of our strength, God.